Hi everyone, I hope you're well. Today I'm going to do a short video on polar alignment. So I'm going to show three methods of polar alignment. One using the basic method with the polar scope. Uh, one which is a method I've used for some time now which is a program called SharpCap. And finally the new um, plugin for Nina which is a three star polar alignment. Now I've been testing this out recently, watched a couple of videos, I know Pat Prokop and Quiv the Lazy Geek have done um, videos on this and I found that quite interesting. I've used the plugin myself and the results have been excellent and one of the really big advantages of this is I don't need to touch the scope at all. Um, in sort of a 90 degree turn which I have to do in um, sharp cap it does all the movements itself doing all the plate solving and the only changes I have to make are actually to the azimuth and the alt bolts uh, to get the actual polar alignment spot on a really good advantage is you do not need to be able to see Polaris to use this so if you're out in the field got rough polar alignment in your way off it doesn't matter it will use the stars that it can see and then it will let you get good polar alignment for your uh, mount. So anyway, we'll uh, go through the three stages and see which one you like the best and uh, hopefully it can help you get good polar alignment. My name's Glenn and you're watching Astro Bloke. So one of the first things we need to do is actually get a view through the polar scope. So if we take this cap off and you look down inside, there's actually a rod that goes through. And what you need to do is the deck needs to actually be turned 90 degrees and that will give you a view through. It'll give us a hole there that lines up. If you now look through the polar scope, you'll see this layout. Now I'm only going to be dealing with the uh, dial in the center as this is what you use for the Northern Hemisphere, which is where I am. So what I would do is turn the RA axis on the mount so the zero is at the top. And then you can either go on the internet or I use an app uh, called Polar Align Pro. And this brings up a position of Polaris for you where it should be on the dial. As you can see in this instance, it's just past 12 o'clock. So what you would then do is adjusting the azimuth and the altitude bolts, you would get Polaris into the same position on the dial in the polar scope and uh, get it to match what you see on the app or whatever device or way you have found where Polaris should be for the time of day where you are, well, should I say the time of night where you are. One of the things with this mount is it has been uh, quite well documented in places where people have, where they're trying to adjust it, bent the actual screws that go in here. They're not that substantial, they're not very thick if you look at them, they're quite thin. So yes, I can see that you could bend them quite easily. So what I would suggest is if you just take off some of the tension on the main nut that holds the mount, this allows you to make the adjustments to the azimuth very easy and it will move very smoothly without too much resistance. You've got less chance of bending the bolts. So what I do is I get everything really close on the uh, azimuth and then once I'm there, I then tighten up this again and just give that a little tweak up. Now I'll adjust the alt so using the up and down here and you can see I've actually got some aftermarket things here that I've bought bolts because it's a little bit better um, and once I get the alt sorted I then just give the very last tweaks needed to the azimuth and because you're doing such small movements the fact that it's all tightened up now isn't going to make any problems. You'll find that when you untighten it, it will change the uh, altitude. So you do be aware of that. And that's why I do the asthma first and the altitude afterwards. But 
be aware of these pins. They are easy to bend and you don't want to damage them. So just a little bit of tension off. Don't need to undo it a lot. Just literally take the tightness off and you'll find it a lot easier to adjust. I actually find a lot of the time that when I'm really close to my polar alignment, rather than moving both screws, I find that if I need to maybe say move it right, I'll just tighten the one on the right a little bit. And then if it doesn't quite make it, maybe just a little bit of loosening on the left, you'll find that they can make enough of a movement to bring you into a really good alignment. Um, what you don't want to be doing is doing too much both sides and then it moves too much, uh, which is very easy to do. Especially with sharp cap, it gives you a really close alignment. So you want to just make the smallest of movements and sometimes just tightening one, just that little bit is enough. Be careful, don't over tighten things. This is where I think a lot of people go wrong. They, they crank things up and uh, it really isn't needed. So moving on to the second method, which is a program called Sharp Cap. Now this I've been using for some time and does give a really good polar alignment um, result. So once it's up and running, uh, you need to select which camera you're going to use. Here I'm going to use my ASI, Air, sorry, my ASI 120mm. And then you want to be um, using between one and two seconds um, on the uh, exposure and then adjust the gain so that some stars appear on the screen and then once it's uh, been able to uh, pilot plate solve the first stage what will happen is it will give you the option to go next and then it will say to you rotate your mount through 90 degrees on the RA axis now you can do this by releasing the RA and moving it manually or as you can see here I've literally just put the uh, speed of the mount to the highest which is 4 and I'm just using the controls on EQ mod to move it through the 90 degrees. So once you've done that, it will come up with that it will come up with the error. And you push next and now it's saying you can uh, make the adjustments uh, that you need to make to the uh, azimuth bolts and the uh, altitude bolts to get the star into the uh, right position. So it's saying here that we need to move the um, axis of the uh, deck, sorry, of the mount. Uh, we need to move the azimuth bolts right, and we move to move the alt uh, down. So I've started with the alt bolts because uh, they are sometimes the harder ones to move about, and uh, I get the up and down as close as possible to zero, and then I work on the azimuth and you'll get three kind of uh, ratings here of fair and then it will go good if you get uh, the alignment quite close and then if you get excellent you know that you've got a really good uh, polar alignment and so I try and get excellent it's um, I mean you can spend a long time trying to get both of the axis on zero but to be honest with you um, it's not needed um, and it would take you a long time to get that kind of adjustment but get it on excellent and then you're good to go. Right, uh, that's a sharp cap. So let's move on to the third and final method that I use. Okay, so this is the Nina version and uh, under the nightly builds have now got this new plug-in section um, you've got two bits there the available and the installed so you go to the available and it allows you to download the different plugins that are there um, and I've downloaded darts custom which is for filter offsets and also the three points uh, polar alignment so once they've been installed they're available under the plugin section you don't launch them from here, um, you'll find them actually in Nina, normally in the sequence uh, controls. So if I go there now, and uh, you can see there, I've got um, <clears throat> the filter offset calculator from the Darts Custom. And if I scroll down a bit further uh, to polar alignment, there it is under P, three point polar alignment. 
that will also come up as a separate window once you've opened it so uh, like on other things with Nina if you want to have lots of windows and you can click on the one you want you can add it in so the first thing to make sure you've done is that you've got uh, your scope in uh, focus and then we can push play on this now I uh, always do my polar alignment and things like um, plate solving with my luminance filter because then I can have nice short subs for that to happen so anyway we push play on here and what happens is you can see if you look down in the bottom right there my scope is uh, slewing to a position and what will happen is it will slew to the first position and it will take a short exposure and then plate solve that so we'll just let that finish moving it's finished there and I'm just waiting for it to uh, there we go it's taking its image and there's the image and it's plate solving that and once it's plate solved it will now move to the second position and do the same again so it's just settling and, there's, uh, and then it's now taking the second image and it's going to plate solve that and I use ASTAP for my plate solving on Nina it's nice and quick and uh, very reliable and it's now moved to the third and final position and it's plate solving that now once it's plate solved what will happen is it will come up with the error and there you can see it's telling me it's got to move right and it's got to move down so it's quite a bit out I've been doing quite a lot of uh, movements with the uh, mount recently uh, taking a scope on and off and shifting stuff so um, I'm not surprised my plate uh, I'm sorry my uh, uh, polar alignment is out so now what I do is I get up and the same as with sharp cap I make the movements and while I'm making the movements the program will constantly be plate solving and show me what corrections I've made and it's basically a case I, I normally start with one of the axes and get that close then I go on to the other axis and get that close and then I do the fine tweaking at the end to get it finalized and then once you've got it in its uh, as nice and close and you're happy that's your plate solving done and um, I really like this I think this is uh, my favorite now um, it's very easy it's all built into the program as well of uh, Nina whereas before what I'd have to do is connect my camera to SharpCap run SharpCap separately get everything plate solved then I would switch back to Nina after shutting SharpCap down now I can open Nina and this routine is within that so there's no opening any other programs and of course I haven't got an annual subscription with this so this is this is brilliant um, and uh, out in the field as well um, it's it's great because if I don't have a view of Polaris it doesn't matter I can uh, use this it can have the scope starting off pointing anywhere to the south to the east to the west it doesn't matter as long as your mount is uh, pointing north um, it will pick up the three stars and it will tell you which adjustments you need to make so I think this is excellent and a really good add-on and something that uh, you might like too so that's the uh, last of the polar alignment uh, routines that I know about and that I use. There are others about, uh, there's things like iPolar, there's uh, the Pole Master, there's lots of different uh, options. Some people use the routine in the ASI Air Pro. Um, there's even routines on the handset and also even in the Skywatcher app. Um, there's lots of different types but these are the ones I've used and at the moment this is definitely my favourite. So as I said there's uh, three methods that I've used for polar alignment. Um, definitely the Nina one is my favourite now. And also the other thing to point out is I was doing that on my new CT10 scope so the focal length of that is 1200 millimetres. So you'll zoom quite in as well on the uh, stars that you're doing that polar alignment on. So I would think that's actually giving some really good accuracy. So um, yeah, I'm re I really like that. Anyway, uh, any questions, uh, please pop them in the comment section below. More than happy to chat with anyone um, and answer any questions if you do have any. And until next time, I'd love to wish you all clear skies and take care.